what's up guys Alex here thank you for checking this video and welcome to another episode about Vala in this tutorial we're gonna take a look on how to store our G settings in order to save the state of our application window this episode is brought to you by SkySilk if you're looking for a powerful reliable and affordable VPS in the cloud SkySilk.com is the answer for you Look no further for amazing, powerful cloud computing machine starting as low as $1 per month. Click the link in the description below to learn more. So first of all, let's continue what we did before in a previous lesson. Let's also handle the sizing of our application. Right now we're just handling the position, but we're not considering the sizing. So let's use another method in order to actually resize our window. And of course, if to move the window is method is called move, to resize the window, the method is called resize. And the resize accept the width and height as an integer of how we wanna resize our window. So we can literally copy what we did here, but change the keys of our G settings to window dash width and then window dash height. Perfect. So now if we trigger once again our application and we go type ninja to show all, oh, there's an error, sorry. I didn't put the semicolon ninja once again perfect if we trigger the application now the application will open at the position that we specify 360 360 and will be as big as 600 by 400 if we move it around and we resize it and then we close it if we reopen it again the application the window should actually respect the latest state where it was before getting closed so now we need to save that state before the application gets closed Every GTK widget has a bunch of signals. A signal is something that it gets emitted at a specific point in time of the life on a GTK widget or a specific widget. In our case, we wanna tap a specific signal that gets emitted before the widget gets closed. If you're kind of like super confused of what I'm saying right now, let's access the Valadoc documentation and let's access the GTK widget documentation. Of course, like in every widget in the Valadoc, we have a bunch of properties and then we have a bunch of static methods, private methods, public methods, and so on. Right at the bottom, we have all these little signals that are represented by this lightning bolt. These signals are the events that we can listen to and we can intercept, we can connect a specific method to it and we can modify. What we're interested in is the destroy event, which gets triggered when the Windows is destroyed. So in order to intercept this destroy event and say whenever the window gets destroyed, let's do something else, we can connect it to our application. So we can say that here in the construct, we can tap this little delete event. So whenever the delete event gets triggered, we want to connect a specific event. The event will be passed with an arrow function, so equal and bigger than inside curly brackets, and then we can return the method that we want to tap whenever this delete event happens. And the method, you can call it however you want. We're going to call it before destroy, for example. The before destroy method is something that we need to define, of course, a semicolon at the end. So let's define this destroy method. So this is a public boolean before destroy no parameters needs to be passed and this has to be a boolean because the delete event in the documentation accepts a boolean so if this is true the window won't be destroyed if this is false the windows will be destroyed so we can intercept it and change the behavior of this event so let's do it just to run a quick test if we return true we save it and we open our terminal and we compile it ninja perfect trigger our application perfect now if we close it it doesn't close. We're clicking here because we intercepted the destroy event and we are returning true instead of false. In order to close it, just access your terminal and uh, hit control C on your keyboard. So we are gonna kill the application. But this is great because it gives us the ability to do whatever we want before returning the false event, which is the boolean that tells the application that yes, you can actually destroy the window. So what we wanna do here, we wanna simply save all those information, the width and height and X and Y position of our current window of our current application. So first let's generate or let's define those variable. We wanna define the width, the height, the X and Y. And all these variable, we can declare them in line by specifying the type hinting them just once. So all these variables, they should be 
integers. We are doing this because we don't want to accept something else than an integer. We don't want to store nothing other than integers inside our G settings because that's what we're expecting. Then we need to use two methods of the GTK widget to get the size and get the position of our application. So get the size. When we use this method, we'll automatically speed out. So output the width and height. Output that's the out stands for this is the value we want to store that value that gets outputted from the get side into the width variable that we declared before and then the second output is the height same thing we can do it for the position so we can get the position and the position will output the x and y of our application so let's output the x and let's output the y by doing this we're automatically storing all these outputs width and height in the width and height variables that we declared. We cannot do in this before having some variables to use. We cannot generate in line those variables. So now that we have this, we can basically do what we're doing here, but in reverse. So instead of saying uh, settings, get the hint, we want to set the hint. And the first parameter of set the hint is the name of the G schema key that we want to update. And the second one is the actual value. And we have the value in the X variable. We can do exactly the same for the position Y. And of course, change this from get to set position Y. We pass the Y and then this, then G settings width and height. Let's go super quickly and semicolon, boom, and semicolon. And here also is set and set. And then we want to set the width, perfect. And here we want to set the height, perfect. So now where that we did that, if we open our terminal and we type ninja, we're going to have an error because the settings, the G settings, the G lib settings that we define here are not as accessible inside this other method. This is a local scope variable. It's a variable that we locally declared inside our construct. So it's only accessible in within the construct and not accessible outside. If we want to make this variable accessible and usable throughout the entire class, we need to define it as an attribute of that very own class. So we can do it by writing it outside any other method, but inside the class. And we can set the visibility, which by default it's public, but you can make it private or protected. Then we need to type hint it. What this type of variable is, is an instance of the glib settings, and then the name of the variable, in our case is settings. So now that we did that, we need to absolutely remove the declaration of this variable and just leave it settings. If we use variable, we will say to our script that we need to ignore this and also these settings will be declared once again locally, but we don't want it. We want it to be globally available inside our class. Perfect. Let's try one more time. Ninja. Oh, that's a typo. It's width. Sorry about that. And once again, ninja. And width. And it's also here. I wrongly declared the variable. Okay, no more errors. So now if we trigger our application, it opens where is expected. If we move it to the side and we resize it, we close it, we open it once again, it reopens in the exact same position with the exact same sizing. Phenomenal. If we do it once again here, we open, it works. Fantastic. And of course, you can confirm it by opening the dconf editor, go inside your com, github, your name and the name of your application, and check the values that have been changed and updated whenever you close or you destroy your application window. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.